Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about Space Marine chapters as we get into the Silver Skulls. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40K lore videos every single day. If you have any suggestions, comment down below. And if you enjoy our content, thank our patrons on Patreon. It's because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. But with that said, let's get into 40 facts on the Silver Skulls. The Silver Skulls is a Codex Astarte compliant loyalist chapter of Space Marines, which is a possible second founding successor chapter of the Ultramarines, though this remains unconfirmed. The Silver Skulls will only take to the battlefield when their psychic omens that their specialist librarians known as prognosticators receive from the Emperor to indicate that the outcome of the combat will be favorable for the chapter. The Silver Skulls primarily wear metallic silver power armor with the exception of the trim of the shoulder guard which are black. On their left shoulder plate is the emblem of their chapter, a stylized skull cast in silver. Each squad's emblem has the skull's eyes picked out in a gemstone that provides them with a name. Ironically, their chapter icon is eerily similar to the pre-Horus Heresy badge of the Iron Warriors. Although there is little information available on the chapter in Imperial Records, several references indicate that the Silver Skulls may be amongst the most renowned and honored chapters of the Second Founding. Whatever the truth of their heritage, the Silver Skulls have earned a reputation for victory no matter the odds. The Silver Skulls rely upon the librarians to keep up this reputation. The chapter never deploys without consulting a librarian's augury, and considers such utterances as the word of the Emperor himself. This is because the Silver Skulls believe that the Emperor guides their purpose and they choose to take to the battlefield only when forewarned to. Such behavior does not sit well with the Imperial commanders, but victory is seen as ample compensation by most of the Silver Skull's allies. Their homeworld is the feral world of Varsavia, but they do not seem to solely recruit from there. The chapter also finds its recruits on a world called Granada II, recruiting the feral tribesmen from the planet's ash wastes. Varsavia and Granada II are only two of many recruitment planets used by the Silver Skulls. With increasing raids by the renegade forces of the Maelstrom threatening this region, Lord Commander Argentius agreed to the region's need for semi-permanent protection provided by the Silver Skulls. Regular patrols were provided from this chapter's fleet, a rotating duty for those battle brothers who were not deployed on the field of battle elsewhere. Ever since piratical raids had first assaulted the Gildar system, the Silver Skulls had established their patrols across the rift and set up shop on the planet of Varsavia. The Silver Skulls chapter homeworld became Varsavia. It hugs the outer rim of the region of the galaxy known as the Gildar Rift. In this far-flung, often neglected area of the Imperium, the Silver Skulls represent the closest Astarte response force. Varsavia is the fifth planet in a star system of seven worlds. It is an ice world orbited by five moons, set in the galactic north of the Segmentum Obscurus. For being a death world, there is a considerable array of indigenous life, much of it hostile in the extreme. This is a marvel given that the natural disasters that saw most of the planets locked in permafrost in an erratic orbit between the binary stars of its system. What is even more unexpected is that humanity survives here. Varsavia, the only inhabited planet in the system, has three volcanoes, each one known to be active. A check of historical records suggests that there have been no logged eruptions for several hundred Terran standard years. There are three continental landmasses, but only one sustains human life and it is split approximately in half by a landlocked sea. The southern lands are inhabited almost exclusively by the tribal people who are descended from the planet's original human settlers. It remains a mystery as to how they endured the series of volcanic eruptions and subsequent disruptions of the planet's weather system. Nonetheless, these tribes now thrive. They are considered primitive in nature and the creed of the God Emperor has been slowly introduced to them one tribe at a time. Most have embraced these teachings, and while they have eschewed the opportunity of moving to civilized north, they show their fealty to the Emperor and his Imperium. 
A number of Silver Skull Space Marines are drawn from these people, and they make tenacious warriors. A few isolated tribes have remained resistant to the Ecclesiarchy missionary efforts, but in due course the Imperium will address this issue. They are made up of hardy stock and provide an excellent recruiting ground for the Adeptus Astarte, and may yet provide a founding for a regiment of the Astra Militarum. The Fortress Monastery of the Silver Skulls is situated in the far north of the only settled continent, built into the side of the largest mountain in a great range. Silver veins run through the rocks, and it is believed that this is why the Silver Skulls selected Varsavia as their new homeworld when the unfortunate events of Liara pushed them from their original chapter planet. Relishing the challenges that maintaining peace in the sector offers, the Silver Skulls had set themselves to the task of regularly patrolling the Gildar Rift. Other chapters of the Adeptus Astarte would rarely volunteer themselves for such an inglorious duty, but the Silver Skulls considered the sector to be part of their chapter territory. Over the years, the Silver Skulls and the infamous Chaos Space Marines of the Red Corsairs, who dwell within the permanent warp rift that was the Maelstrom, have shared many encounters. The Gildar Rift had seen incursions from these would-be raiders many times, but each have been successfully thwarted. Since Gilliman laid down the organizational dictates of the Space Marines in the Codex Astarte, it has become the prescription of the military organization and order of battle in almost every Space Marine chapter in the Imperium. Believing themselves to be the scions of Gilliman, the Silver Skulls strive to emulate their forebearer's example and do their Primarch proud. However, the Silver Skulls have strayed from the precise structure laid out in the Codex, though the chapter remains faithful to the spirit of the Codex's teaching. Their main difference from the Codex compliant chapter is that the Silver Skulls possess a specialist rank known as a Prognosticator. The Prognosticators are those chapter librarians who also serve as the Silver Skull's spiritual advisors, akin to the chaplains of other chapters. These devout individuals not only provide spiritual guidance for their fellow battle brothers, but use their powerful psychic abilities to perform the sacred duty of reading the signs to determine whether or not their chapter's might is needed in accordance with the Emperor's divine will. This specialist rank continues to cause concern among certain Imperial organizations, such as the Inquisition. Perhaps in part because of their tribal nature, the Silver Skulls hold fast to potential deviations of superstition. Their librarium is not arranged according to the Codex Astarte. Instead, they utilize a body known as the Prognosticatum. This body is comprised of the chapter's elite librarian chaplains, known as Prognosticators, and a handful of chaplains who serve the chapter. These are the chapter's champions, its greatest heroes. None dispute the fact that the Prognosticatum is a true ruling power within the Silver Skulls. Inspirational and powerful, this elite unit is formed of psychic battle brothers whose prowess on the front line is second to none. Frequently, these Astartes are psychers whose gifts lie in a different direction from the esocentric divination and precognitive abilities that are so crucial to the functioning of a chapter and lean towards the more destructive, though this fact is not widely known among the Silver Skulls. Some prognosticators possess psychic abilities that are not always potent enough to provide a clear picture of the future of the chapter but this fact is also never advertised outside of the prognosticatum, as the chapter's morale is initially bound up with the faith of its prognosticator's precognitive pronouncements. A prognosticator's role when he is assigned to a company is not only to advise the company's captain, but also to provide spiritual guidance to its battle brothers in accordance with its position as a chaplain librarian. Not all companies within the Silver Skulls have their own prognosticator. They are a rare breed. Chaplains within the chapter are no less valuable or less respected, but it is undeniable that the prognosticators and the rest of the prognosticatum steer the chapter's course. The most important decisions required by the chapter were ultimately left to the prognosticatum and its governing council, which is overseen by the chapter master, Equerry, and the chief advisor, Vashiro, the chapter chief prognosticator. No decision that directly affects the entire chapter is ever settled without the prognosticatum first casting its predictions. Within the Silver Skulls chapter, those who represent the council of the prognosticatum are revered second only to the Lord Commander. 
The entire Silver Skull chapter has been known to refuse to take to the field of battle when a prognosticator has said that the omens were poor. Moreover, and more worrisome, there is evidence that they claim that these visions are delivered to them by the voice of the most glorious God Emperor. Within the chapter's librarium lies a large number of tomes collectively known as the Orthodoxy. These are the books of the Prognosticator's Creed, a compilation of volumes of the collected wisdom and prophecies of each individual prognosticator down through the millennia. Throughout the Orthodoxy, the prognosticators gain access to the knowledge. They capture their dreams and visions and contain them for eternity within the pages of these books. In this way, the orthodoxy ensures that the knowledge and foresight of the ages is passed down to all silver skulls. Orthodoxy contains many predictions that may not come to fruition for many centuries, if ever. Within the pages of each tome are many recollections and unexplained dreams. Those that have not yet come to pass are considered by the prognosticatum and judged for truth. Those judged unworthy are struck from the pages of the sacred tomes. Unlike many other chapters, the Silver Skulls remain ignorant as to the truth of their genetic heritage. The name of their Primarch, the Primarch whose genetic material first formed their chapter, was unknown to them, as the records have been lost. However, some fragmentary references in Imperial records indicate that the Silver Skulls had once been a more famed chapter to have been formed during the Second Founding, after the end of the Horus Heresy. Several centuries previously, the chapter's apothecaries have performed countless genetic tests on the Silver Skull's gene seed, which suggest that the Silver Skulls are more likely the successor chapters of the Ultramarines. But the truth of the chapter's heritage matters little to the Silver Skulls. The simple fact is, they do exist, and despite many great hardships, have thrived and prospered in the pursuit of the Emperor's will. The Silver Skulls have a reputation for being fierce fighters warriors who have acquitted themselves to the field of battle with almost legendary savagery. They prefer to deploy more as skirmishers than line troops, unleashing their strength where it will make the most difference when fighting alongside other imperial military forces. Their refusal to give ground during combat is a defining trait of the chapter. In training, Silver Skull Battle Brothers perform their daily exercises in the half-light of a training cage. The lighting in these areas is intentionally dull. The loom scouts embedded in the walls giving off little more. It is a habit of the Silver Skulls to train in varying levels of light, since such practice better prepares them to face combat at any condition and helps maintain their ability to control their enhanced eyesight. A chapter with a well-established reputation for victory, even in the face of overwhelming odds, the Silver Skulls never deploy for battle without consulting the prophecy. They rely on their prognosticators for such auguries, and consider the prophecies that they deliver as the word of the Emperor. The Silver Skulls follow the precepts of the Varsovian Orthodoxy, a variation of the standard creed of the Imperial cult. Unusually devout for Space Marines, Silver Skull Astartes are known to make the sign of the Aquila at the mere mention of an evil individual or before facing a deadly opponent. As the Silver Skulls are also unusually superstitious, they believe that this gesture can ward off evil. When a battle brother prays before going into battle, he will speak with his own personal litany, often in the tribal dialect of his birth. Such connections to their prior lives as mortals before ascension to the ranks of the Astartes is actively encouraged. The Silver Skulls are proud of their heritage, and those who have come from the chapter's homeworld tend to stoically hold onto the traditions and practices of their upbringing. The fortress monastery of the Silver Skulls is located deep in the heart of the Verician Northern Mountain. It is a harsh, inhospitable place that only the most tenacious and hardy souls brave. Most of the chapter's young aspirants and neophytes see their first view of the fortress monastery from the window of the transport that carries them there. A select few have climbed their way to the top of the mountain alone. This is an impressive feat even for an Astarte, let alone a handful of mortal children who accomplish it. Before becoming a full-fledged space marine, a Silver Skull's neophyte is required to undergo a ceremonial ritual known as the Fast of Ascension, a trial of the spirit, 
What this exactly entails is unclear to outsiders. The neophyte must also undergo a final test of endurance, known as the Long Patrol. Forming part of the final stage of recruitment, the Long Patrol sees the aspirant sent out into the feral wilds of the Varsavian Tundra with no more than a combat knife to defend themselves. Those who survive remain with the chapter and ascend into its ranks. Those who die during the Long Patrol are remembered with honor. Only those worthy enough to have reached the final stage of the process are permitted to walk the Long Patrol. It is considered better by far to die on the Long Patrol than to fail and become a chapter serf, the most common fate for failed Silver Skull aspirants. Every recruit, alongside his rigorous physical training regimen and hypnodoctrination, is required to divine their future path at some point with a prognosticator. All of the Silver Skulls are required to undertake a pilgrimage prior to their final conversion and deployment into the Scout Company. The long, lonely trip to the far-flung Prognosticator Temple, where the individual auguries are cast, requires traveling through mountains that are rugged and to the extreme. This pilgrimage traditionally occurs prior to the insertion of the progenioid gland, the most sacred of the Astarte gene seed implants, to receive the quintessence sacred is considered the pinnacle of achievement. If successful in their pilgrimage and having received the approval of the prognosticators, the neophytes must then pass one final thorough medical examination by the chapter's apothecaries to be welcomed and initiated into the full chapter. Every battle brother of the Silver Skulls who ascends into the full rank of the chapter is granted a personal audience with the chief prognosticator's presence. Each battle brother receives a private blessing from the chapter's greatest seer. No silver skull ever speaks of the deeply personal words or forewarnings provided by the chief prognosticator during this private session in front of any other. Each battle brother's possible future is spelled out in this meeting, and it is understood that it is improper to speak of such things openly. Of course, the future is often presented as a riddle or a parable of some kind and its import is rarely immediately clear. Silver Skulls are known to use little to no ostentation, apart from the rich displays of the company's trophies that are located in their company chapel. The chapter is not aesthetically handicapped. They take great pride in their body art, and their tattoo artists, the Custodis Kruor, or the chapter artisans, are highly regarded. Many of the Silver Skulls design their own tattoos, and a number of them are genuinely talented artists. The ancient Varsavian tribal traditions of marking the body is considered the ultimate battle honor, and every battle brother of the Silver Skulls boasts a design that is completely unique to the individual, some choosing representations of great battles that are breathtaking in their detail. In all cases, the last part of the Silver Skull's body to receive such markings is his face. Only on ascension to the rank of captain is a Silver Skull's Astarte allowed to receive that honor. The Silver Skulls have a unique funeral world named Pax Argentius. It is one of the three small moons that orbits their homeworld of Varsavia. In accordance with their chapter's deeply rooted superstitions, they believe that the spirits of the dead and the souls of their ancestors look down on them from the moon, watching over them and guiding them forward. It is an extraordinary place, with mausoleums and memorials that have been lovingly handcrafted and engraved by the brothers of the Custodis artisans. The entirety of the moon is maintained with pride by a versatile army of chapter serfs. So many memorials and monuments are unusual given that the chapter's choice of burial for its Astarte is cremation. Whenever possible, the ashes of the honored dead are placed in an urn that is ornately carved and fashioned from the skull of the enemy that took his life. If this is not possible, then his brothers fashion a passable substitute from the finest materials. If opinion concerning the contradictory nature of cremating and yet honoring their dead with funerary monuments bother the silver skulls, they never acknowledge it. Pax Argentius, the funerary moon, is a place where the last divide between the Astartes of the chapter and the mortals who served alongside them is rubbed away. Here, artificers are buried alongside their masters. All those who swore fealty to the battle brothers of Varsavia 
are in death ultimately treated as the equals they could never be in real life. It is a devoutly spiritual place, and one which frequently draws young warriors to its calming presence. Every battle brother of the chapter seeks his own manner of quelling the furious Varsovian fires that rage in his belly at the time of his ascension. This sense of peace can often be found amongst the walkways and corridors of the dead. This along with the sacred hollowed monument to the first Argentius have given the moon its name. Pax Argentius is also where the battle brothers who train as chaplains go to study the texts and tomes of their calling. Only there, amidst the spirits of the fallen, do these chaplains in training feel that they can truly understand the lessons of the past. Like the more numerous psychic prognosticators, the chapter's chaplains are deeply superstitious and fanatical in the discharge of their duties. The Silver Skulls are also known to perform a service for the dead, during which prayers are intoned for the fallen with respect and reverence. This is known as the Varsovian Prayer to the Departed a silver skull's tradition that had come to the chapter from the tribal shamans of Varsovia. The seemingly endless list of names recited from memory during the prayer represents all those departed battle brothers who the prayer reciter had fought alongside. Just as some battle brothers carry the names of the fallen in high gothic copper plate scripts in the tattoos they place on their bodies, others carry the names of the honored dead within their minds. The silver skulls also have a brutal reputation as headhunters, for Silver Skull Astartes are known for wearing the decapitated heads and the skulls of their enemies as trophies to their power armor. The reason for their unusually barbaric customs remains unclear, though it was likely derived from the original customs of the Silver Skull Astartes recruited from the feral tribesmen of Garanda II. Within the darker recesses of the Silver Skull's chapel, are kept a number of silver-coated skulls standing on plithes. Each is adorned with a plaque detailing the name of the battle brother who had taken the trophy and the date of the victory. Collecting the skulls of mighty enemies is more than just a case of ostentation and pride. It is considered a measure of the company's strength and honor. The custodis curors, the chapter's artisans, extract the skulls from their former owners and coat them in molten silver. Each one is an exquisite work of art, covered in spirals and whirls, tribal markings, sometimes matching the tattoos of the battle brothers who had slain the fallen enemy, are covered on the surface, marking each trophy as the rightful property of the Astartes' original tribe. Every skull is another mark of honor for the battle brother who had taken it. Each one represents another vanquished foe. For every skull there is a singular unique memory. From the massive skull of an orc war boss to the slender, elongated skull that still has part of its spine attached that once belonged to the Tyranid gene stealers. Every trophy comes with its own story, when not deployed on maneuvers or during the long period of space travel that carries them to their battlefield, the silver skulls regularly gather to tell the stories of their conquest. Those with a flair for the dramatic can hold their battle brothers captivated, regardless of how many times the story has been told. And those were 40 Facts on the Silver Skulls. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, share it with your friends and thank our patrons on Patreon. It's because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. It's a dollar a month. I will talk to you guys tomorrow with more compilation videos and more new videos. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>